day, I think when I came to Detroit, there was a lot of work to do, and that's what we're trying to do. Um, but, uh, you know, talking about this year right now, we're talking about right now, and, uh, you know, these first four games, and, and obviously today wasn't good enough. I think after four games, you know, our team can really take a look at itself and say, okay, hey, how do we need to play the games? What do we got to do? We've got some work to do during the bye week here, I think, which will be good for us to really take a look at how do we need to play going forward. And I think that's probably the most important thing from that standpoint is what do we do going forward um, and, and how do we win? Matt Patricia embattled head coach of the Lions year three of his effort to try to turn the team around. And and I think he may have inadvertently stepped on a landmine when he made that comment. There was a lot of work to do when I got here because he's had pushback from folks who say, wait a minute, it's not like Jim Caldwell was stinking the joint up. No. They had been to the playoffs. They had right. been nine and seven. Here, here's the reality. When Bob Quinn was hired, and this is why I don't like this two-track. I hear you, Mike. You're right. We have a coach, and we're hiring a GM. No, fire everybody. Just fire everybody and let the new GM start over. Don't fire the GM and keep the coach because the GM is just going to bide his time until he gets to hire his own coach. That's how it always works. So instead of firing Caldwell, remember early on Bob Quinn made Caldwell just kind of wait yeah. and wonder – and I think Quinn talked to some other people who may have done things different ways. You know, some GMs went in and fired the coach immediately. Others gave them a chance. The problem is you give them a chance. They may do well enough. Right. It makes it hard to finally rip off the Band-Aid. And now when Matt Patricia has failed to take the team to where Jim Caldwell had them, Patricia's in jeopardy, Quinn's in jeopardy, and the question is how long do the Lions want to try this this Patriot way in the upper Midwest approach. At what point do they just say it's not working and we need to go in a different direction? Yeah. Well, they're getting close to that. I don't think there's any denying that. The, I mean, uh, you know, again, I think what's a little different, at least here, the optics are better for Detroit as far as just this year's concern, not in totality, not even, it's not comparable to Billy O'Brien. I mean, Billy O'Brien, like we talked about four to six years, a AFC South champ. That's different, but I still think they win a game in Arizona. Very competitive last week against New Orleans. I mean, the game is there to present itself. You know, they're going to kick themselves in, 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 you know, in the butt all year long about blowing week one because, man, would they feel a whole lot different if they were going into this bye week two and two? Because, and this is why, you know, my, my thing I'll say here is this is why I don't rush to any decisions quite yet. They got the Jaguars, the Falcons, the Colts, the Vikings, the football team, the Carolina Panthers. I can sit here, Mike, and not to say they're going to win all of them, but I certainly can look at every game that we just mentioned, uh, you know, five out of the next six games. Other than the Colts, I could sit there and go, Detroit can beat Jacksonville. Detroit can beat Atlanta. Detroit can beat Minnesota. Detroit can beat the football team. Detroit can beat Carolina. So I would wait to kind of see how that kind of shuffles out, I think, if I was running Detroit, just to see where we go there and then maybe make a decision. I don't know. You agree with me with that or not? No, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I, I don't think you do it during the season. I think last year they made it clear that they were going to give it another year, and a lot can still happen over the final 12 games. But I'll tell you what, coming up fairly soon, maybe by Thanksgiving, it, well, definitely by Thanksgiving, we're going to be able to do an apples-to-apples -apples comparison of Matt Patricia's record and Jim Caldwell's record. Caldwell was 36-28 and 28 in four seasons. Patricia is 10-25. and 25. He loses three more games. It's whatever he is far below 36-28 yeah. and 28 yeah. versus Caldwell's 36-28. and 28. And I think that's when it potentially reaches critical mass from the standpoint of the fans. And, and that was one thing that, that was clear last year when Martha Ford said at the end of the year, that they're coming back. It, it was it was clear that that they're going to listen to the customers. So at some point, the customers are going to get pretty loud. And if they are going to listen to the customers now, now uh, Martha Ford has turned over the reins to Sheila Ford Hamp, who's running the team. But at some point, that's part of it because yeah. ultimately, you've got to convince people to give up their time, their money, and their passion to support your product. You don't want your fan base to become ambivalent. No, and, it's you know it's scary. You, here's the thing. Look. I know Matt Patricia said when he went to Detroit, he's going to do it his way. He's going to be his guy. But when you're with Bill Belichick for 15 years, a lot of the way Belichick does things seep into the way you do things. It just does. And that Patriot way, if you don't win, it's not sustainable. 
You have to win. Bill Belichick would have been gone in New England if he didn't win. Now everybody's got to win, right? But what I'm saying is yeah, I know. it's got to work. It's got to pop. And it's got to happen sooner than year three to get people to continue to buy in. Because, like, hey, we were fine with Jim Caldwell, and he wasn't doing all this Belichick stuff. He wasn't calling guys out and alienating Darius Slay. And, again, it's calculated. It's part of the effort to build the team the way you want to build it, Chris. But if you don't win games, you're not going to win your locker room. No, you're not. You got to have – I mean, especially if you're going to really – act that Belichickian way right about you where it's going to be no nonsense. It's not going to be about charisma with the media. And yes, I mean, it's not a good look when you have a few issues with some of the star players, Darius Slay, other things like that. Certainly not. It's a different day and age. And in your, you know, this is a, a school of coaching that, you know, came from Bill Parcells, right? I mean, that's kind of the thought. Yeah, it's, it's tough. It's in your face. You know, my dad always says, he didn't realize his name began with a P until after he got done playing because he always thought it began with an F because it was always F Sims, F Sims, whatever, all those type of things. It's in your face, but you're right. You want to see results. And when you don't see results, it starts to wear on you. And as a player, that is, it's hard to deal with. But yeah, Detroit's, they're, they're one of those teams here. They're, they're teetering, certainly, right now in the, in the danger zone to where if it doesn't improve, if they don't become more competitive, go on some win streak, I mean, to what we talked about in Houston before, it's, I think it's all over for everybody. I mean, Patricia, Bob Quinn, Matt Stafford, I think it'll be his last year. They're going to rip the Band-Aid off and go to somewhere else. So, I, I mean, we're getting to the end of the shelf life of everything we see with the Lions here unless they get back on track after the bye week. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.